Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. I hope you're having a great day. I thought today we'd make a cute little pop-up card uh, from one of the Lawn Fawn die sets. So let's get started. We're going to start with the mini pop-up box. And you can see here on the back it makes this little pop-up inside a card, which is really cute. And I'm going to take this piece, we're going to start with the box itself, and we're going to use the paper bag 100 pound weight cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And we're going to go ahead and run that through. I'm running it through my Spellbinders Platinum machine. This is the Platinum 6 machine. And you can see there that it cut and scored and dyed everything in one, one swipe, basically. So now I'm going to take the wood grain backdrop stamp from Lawn Fawn. This is a little bit of an older stamp, but you can see it's well loved and well used. And I'm placing that on my acrylic block. Then I'm going to use the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink pad to ink that up. You could also use a brown ink pad. I actually meant to grab the pine cone and I grabbed the Nocturne instead. So either one would work fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp that on this entire panel. Then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to stamp the entire inside as well. I really just need the flaps to be stamped, but it's easier just to stamp the whole thing. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold those little uh, flaps down. And I'm going to grab my, uh, my Lawn Fawn Teflon bone folder here, and I'm just going to press those flaps down into place. And I'm also going to just bend those little tabs in either way for now because we're going to move them around a little bit later. So, and just make sure everything just forms that nice box shape. And I'm going to tuck those in and you can see that it makes the cutest little box. So now what I want to do is take my ground espresso oxide ink and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a little bit of a, an edge around each of those flaps. And then I'm going to do it also along the top of the box and along the sides of the box as well because I'm going to be closing the lid, the, uh, the flaps down on this one. I want it to more look like a wooden crate rather than uh, an open box. So I'm going to take my glue tube and I'm going to put some glue all along all four of those tabs. And then I'm just going to fold those down and just glue them into place. So I thought in order to make it more, look more like a wooden crate, I would use my black jelly roll pen here and just make some little, you know, kind of like nail heads. I want it to look like it's either screwed together or nailed together, like a crate of apples would be. So that's how that ended up looking. And now I need to make the inserts for inside. So I'm going to grab this little piece here. And this is going to make two little inserts for the inside of my box. So I'm taking my Tim Holtz Sidekick. Um, this is a little tiny die cut machine, which I think weighs a pound or two. I just love it. I just got it, and it works really well. So I'm going to cut two of those. And I like it because it's so lightweight and easy to use. So now I'm going to go ahead and just stamp those two little flaps to match the outside of the box. You could probably skip this step, but you kind of can see them when you look in the box. And I'm just going to take that ground espresso and ink the edges of those just a little bit. Now I'm going to fold the flaps in on those two, and there are score marks on these, so it'll fold easily for you. And now I'm going to take some one quarter inch score tape. And I'm going to put a little score tape on that flap for the box. And I'm going to put the score tape on each of these flaps for the inserts on both sides. You can see that I've done that there. Now that you can see how the box is going to fold up and those two inserts are going to go right in there. So I'm just determining where the two flaps will be attached to. And now I'm going to just open the box back up and take, remove the tape from one of the flaps and lay that right in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the second one in place. 
just taking the tape off of that one flap and positioning it a little distance away from the first one. Both of them are lined up with the very top edge of the box. You can see that right there. And then that's going to close. And when I close it, I'll pick up those two tabs. So I'm going to remove the tape from each of those two tabs. And now I'm going to close the box, making sure everything's lined up at the very top edge there. And you can see when I open it up, everything is attached exactly where I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to remove the tape from that flap on the side of the box, and I'm going to line that up, and that's going to form the shape of the box. So now I'm going to go show you that the stamps we're going to use are from Thanks a Bushel. We're going to use that little basket of stamps and the two apples. We're going to use the two squirrels from the Pick of the Patch, and we're going to use that one squirrel from the Forest Feast. And what's nice again is all the sets coordinate together. So the squirrels are all the same, basically the same size. And here you can see I'm taking that full size apple and putting it on an acrylic block because I'm going to need to stamp a bunch of those and it'll be easier just to put it on a separate block. So taking my VersaFine Onyx Black ink pad, I'm going to stamp all the three squirrels, the apple with the bite out of it, and the basket or the bushel of apples. And then I do need a second bushel of apples. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that one as well. And now I'm going to take that little apple I put on the acrylic block and you'll see here why I did it this way. I need 10 of these so it's much easier just to go ahead and stamp those quickly. Now using some purple tape I'm going to attach the coordinating dies to the stamps and run them through my die cut machine. So now we're going to start coloring. I'm going to take the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and the wine red and the light pink and I'm going to go ahead and start to color in this basket of apples. I'm starting with the darkest color, the wine red, and I'm just going to do two or three at a time here because it, it's going to stay nice and wet on this Bristol Smooth paper. And then I'm going to take the lighter pink color and I'm going to go ahead and blend those. This is just my initial blending here. Then you'll see I'm going to go back and do some more. So I'm just kind of moving that ink around a little bit, not being real fussy at this point. Just trying to get that just kind of some shadow here across the stamp. And then what I'm going to do is come back in with my darker color, the wine red, and I'm going to go ahead and apply another coat of that. I didn't want to change colors, so I just applied two coats of the dark red. Then I'm going to come back with the pink and blend again, and that'll just darken everything up for me without changing the color that I'm going for. And I am kind of going for a little bit of that pinky look to show through because of the matching coordinating papers I'm going to be using later. Now you could certainly color this in some of these apples green or whatever colors you like, but I, this is the look that I was going for. So you can see that blends in nicely and you get a nice um, highlighting there. So I went ahead and I did the last three apples and you can see how that looks. Now to do the stems, I just grabbed two shades of green, the light green and the yellow green. I'm going to start with the yellow green, apply that to all those little uh, leaves there. Then I can come in with the uh, the darker green and I'm going to just put it a little bit towards the, the tip there and then blend that out. And you can see I'm just kind of pulling the color and blending it out towards the end. And you can see how that looks there. Now, because I had so much ink on these, I decided that I would heat them with the uh, heat gun really quickly and then I'm going to come in with the Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen in the crystal clear and I'm going to apply that. Now I dried off the uh, the images because this is a water-based uh, product as well so I didn't want the ink on the apples to be too wet. I don't want to move around all the blending I've already done. 
So if they're dry, I have less chances of that happening. So I'm just going ahead and I'm just kind of pulling that color across kind of gently. I don't want to over blend anything and I don't want it to get too, too wet. So if you have to, you, you could go back to your scrap paper and just remove some of the uh, the excess ink color so that you know you, you're not blending too too much and you can also dry it off just a little bit on your scrap paper. So here you can see that I cleaned it off and then I went ahead and I did the leaves and you get a nice pretty sparkle on those apples. We don't need to worry about coloring the basket and again I'm going to heat set that really quickly because I want to come in with my jelly roll pen in the white and I want to add a little bit of highlight to each of those apples. Now, again, if they were too wet, the jelly roll pen would just kind of fade right into it. Um, so I'm drying them off so that that little highlight will stay. So do that kind of as your last thing. Now, I colored in all the 10 apples the exact same way, adding a little highlight, and you can see that there. And the only difference I did on the apple with the bite in it is I took a little bit of a mid gray color and I put a little where the apple bite would be and I'm using my water brush uh, detail tip pen from Tim Holtz and I'm just going to blend that out just a little bit and really what I'm doing is more picking up color. Now I'm going to take light pink, light gray and the mid gray and I'm going to go ahead and color in my little squirrels here. I'm starting off with the lightest color and I'm going to put that you know, pretty much all around except for his little tummy area. Then I'm going to take the darker gray and I'm going to come in and do kind of the areas where I think it would be the darkest. And I'm just going to go back in with that lighter gray again and I'm going to go ahead and blend that out. And I'm not being fussy here. I'm going pretty quickly. I kind of try to use a circular motion when I'm coloring in the little critters because it makes it look a little bit more like fur rather than using like single stroke. I'm trying to use more of a circular touch. And that gives you, like I say, a little bit more of that fur effect. But again, not being fussy at all here. Just trying to get a nice blend on it. And they're going to look cute no matter how you color them. <clears throat> if you want to color them all one color, don't worry about it. They're going to be just as cute. So you can see he blended in nicely. I'm just removing some ink there really. Just making sure that I'm cleaning off the pen and removing some of the darker color. Adding the light pink to his cheeks and just going back with the light gray marker again and blending that out. And you can see there how how cute he is. So I did the exact same thing for the other two squirrels and you can see there I have everything colored in. So now what I want to do is take these and I'm going to place these in, on those two little inserts inside the the basket there in the inside the box but you can see that they don't quite fit so I've got to take a little bit off of each side in order to get them to slide down in there so I'm just flipping it around and marking that length of each of that with a little pencil mark and you can see there that I'm just marking it with a pencil and that's going to be my guide as to how wide I need these to be I'm just going to cut right along that little pencil mark there and then on the front I'm going to cut right at the top of the basket so that I'm just going to notch out that little area and I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. Now I have those two little notches and that's going to sit nicely inside that little insert there. It's perfect. So now you can see underneath you could see a little bit of the white from the basket part where I'm trying to point in there underneath. I'm just going to cut that away. We're not going to need that. It doesn't, it doesn't, it could stay. It doesn't hurt anything, but I just cut it off so it wouldn't show. So now I'm going to take a little bit of score tape, the quarter inch again. I'm going to place a strip of that right along the basket there. 
So now I'm going to do the same thing for the second one, and I've got tape on both of them now, and they're ready to go inside my basket. I'm peeling away the backing, slide them down in, and just make sure they're in position. And it's easy to uh, get them taped down well just by sliding the box back and forth and making sure that they're nice and secure and that everything still works properly. You can see they hang over just a little bit, but it's okay. It doesn't interfere with anything. So that's all set now. Let's get started with the outside in stitched rectangle stackable. And we're going to take the Knit Picky Fall paper pad, and it's got these beautiful, gorgeous colors. And I want this uh, sort of argyle pattern in the lime green. And then I'll, I'm going to need two of those for the inside and the outside of the card. And then I'm also going to pull out this pink in the same pattern, uh, which will be used on the front of the card as well. I'm taking the Watercolor Wishes paper pad, and I'm going to take this blue, kind of like the bluer, kind of a blue-green kind of shade. Any of the blues will work. This is going to be our sky. This just happened to be the one that I had. So now I have all four sh of those sheets ready, and I'm going to cut this rectangle on these three here not the pink one the green the two greens and the blue and you can see that it leaves this beautiful stitched edge all the way around so those are all set to go now with the scrap paper from one of the pieces of green paper I'm going to take that rectangle again and just run it through because this will be the grass and I just need that stitch border around the side two sides and the bottom just so it matches up with everything else that we're doing. And you'll see here in a second, I'm going to take the grassy border die. I'm going to position that on this uh, piece of paper. And it's about maybe an inch up from the bottom total. And you could play around with that. And I'm just going to tape it in place. And then I'm going to run that through my machine. That's going to leave me with the grassy border top and the stitch sides on the remaining three sides. Now I'm going to take this pink paper and I'm going to use the outside in stitched scallop rectangle stackables. And I'm going to use the, uh, the second smallest one here. And I'm going to go ahead and position that on the paper and run that through my machine. Now I originally cut two because I thought I was going to use two and I'll show you later what I was going to do with that, but I ended up using one. Now with the leafy tree backdrop, the portrait one, I'm going to die cut the tree from the paper bag and I'm going to die cut the, uh, the foliage from the cilantro. These are both 100 pound cardstock papers. So now what I want to do is cut that tree off of the frame. I don't want the frame in this case, so it's really easy to just snip it right off of this frame. I'm just following the line of the frame and cutting that away. I just thought it might get too bulky where my pop-up box is going to be if I had this whole frame on here. So I'm getting rid of that. And I'm going to, that you could see there, that's how it's going to look on the card. And you see the, the foliage doesn't have stitching around the other two sides. So I'm going back to the outside in stitched rectangle and I'm going to run this piece through so that everything matches up. I'm not cutting anything. I just want to include the stitched line. So I'm taping it below the cut line and I'm going to run that through again. I'm just taping it in place so that I can run that through. And you'll see that it won't cut. It will just make that stitched line around the top and the side. So now everything will line up. Now that step you could skip, it's not necessary. So I'm taking the Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Ink and I decided just to add a little bit of a shadow here right around the sort of the, ba the bottom part of the foliage of the tree. And then I'm taking my Distress Sprayer from Tim Holtz and I'm just gonna give that a little spritz with the water and then take a paper towel and just blot that up. And that will just give the foliage just a little bit more dimension. 
So now that I have that done, I thought the tree looked a little bit plain. So I'm going to take that tree and I'm going to apply some ground espresso distress oxide around the edges, all kind of around the edges, just to give it a little bit more of a shadow, make it a look, look a little bit more realistic. Not being real fussy here, just kind of adding some where I think it would look the best. And now you can see how much that adds to that. So now I've taken it, this is a four and a quarter uh, by 11 sheet of paper, and I've scored it at five and a half. And I'm just folding it down with the bone folder there. So it's going to be a top folding card. The final di dimensions will be four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm taking the sky that we cut and I'm going to go ahead and take my score tape and I'm uh, placing that all over the back of that. And we're going to position that in place on the, this would be the inside flap, the top flap of the inside of the card. And I'm just centering it here. Now I can go ahead and place that foliage where it needs to go as well. So I'm just removing the backing. And now you see we get that nice stitch border running all the way around there now. And now the tree. And I'm taking my lawn fawn uh, glue tube and I'm going to place a little bit of glue all around. Make sure you get enough on the little tips of the branches there just so they don't pop up. Since this is a movable card, I like to make sure everything is taped down really well. And on the bottom, I'm just cutting a little bit off the bottom of that tree. Again, just trying to reduce the bulk at the fold of the card because we have that box going in there. I didn't want it to get too bulky, so I just trimmed off maybe a quarter of an inch off the bottom. Now I thought the grass needed a little highlighting, so I'm taking the mowed lawn distress oxide and I'm just adding a little bit of depth to the top of that grass and now that looks good so I'm going to go ahead and put some score tape on that and position that in place. So now for the bottom I want that grass to continue down to the uh, bottom part of the card and I'm going to go ahead and put some score tape there as well. and then position that in place. That's always the most nerve wracking part for me is getting it squared up. But now that we've got that done, uh, we can go ahead and put the little squirrel there. I thought I'd put one up in the branches there. And then I'm taking my uh, photo mounting tape and I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of, of the apples that are gonna be in the tree. And when you're doing the photo mounting tape, just kind of make sure it's not going to interfere with the box when the card is closed. You don't want too much bulk there. So these apples will not be in the way of that, that pop-up box. I did double check that prior to putting them on here. So, so that gives that a little bit of dimension. And now I want some apples to look like they're falling from the tree. And here's where I'm just going to put them on flat because again, I'm getting close to the area where the box is going to be and I don't want to interfere with that. So I'm just going to place a little bit of the glue on the back of each of these and glue those in place. Just placing those acrylic blocks there while they dry. And now you can see we've got that all set. So now let's work on the front of the card real quickly. We're going to go ahead and place another green panel on the front of the card. And again, positioning that in place. Just take your time with that. You could use glue if you prefer, then you get a chance to move it around if you don't like where you put it. Now I'm taking this pink panel and I'm gonna position this in the center. So now we've got that ready to go. Now we're all set to place this box. Now you, you need to put tape on those two triangular flaps. So we're going to go ahead and put the tape all over those two flaps and we're going to peel away the backing on that. Just making sure you use something that's going to really hold this in place, something secure. I'm using the score tape. And now I'm folding the box up and I'm trying to decide which way I want it to face. So you can have it facing either way. 
I'm lining up those two corners with the fold of the card, which also lines up those two triangles with the fold of the card. But I found it easier just to take the two corners of the box and line them up with the fold and then push that into place. I just kind of reached inside there with my uh, bone folder just to press those down a little bit and you can see that sits perfectly on the fold there. Now I'm going to take my little squirrel, the other one, and I'm going to I'm going to have a little apple in his hand. I want it to look like he took a little bite out of the apple. A little mis mischievous squirrel here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. I'm just here removing a little excess glue that I had. I seem to be quite glue challenged today. So now I want to put him on top of that little uh, stack of apples. So I'm going to put a little glue on that back apple at the very top. And I'm going to temporarily position this in place. But what I want to do is close the card and make sure it's not sticking out the side. And you can see there that it is sticking out just a little bit. So I'm sliding it over. This is a good reason to use the glue here. You have a little bit of play time. I'm sliding it over and making sure that it doesn't stick out the sides. So that you do want to pay attention to that when you're adding these little add-ons. I'm taking the small stitched rectangle stackable. And I'm taking the coordinating one to this scalloped rectangle here. And I'm going to die cut that out of the white Bristol Smooth cardstock. You can see that makes a really pretty stitched edge as well. And that's going to get positioned on the center of that uh, pink cardstock. So now I'm going back to the Thanks a Bushel stamp set. And I'm going to cut off the Thanks portion. And I'm going to just set the, uh, the bushel part aside for now. I want to stamp Thanks with the freshly cut grass. This is a Lawn Fawn ink pad, and I'm going to go ahead and ink that up. I want to stamp this three times, so that's the first time there. Now you can see I'm moving it up two, two squares on the grid, just two up, and I'm going to stamp that again. This will help you do the lining up, so you don't have to eyeball it. You'll know exactly that you are two grids up, and then I'm going to move it up two more grids, so I'll be at the fourth grid now, and I'm going to stamp it again. So you can see how perfectly that lines everything up for you. That's one thing I do love about the Misty. And so now I have thanks, thanks, thanks. And now I want to do a bushel for the inside. Now I want to do it on a little banner. And there's this, in the mini pop-up box, you get all these wonderful little embellishments, and the banner is one of those. So I'm going to take this banner, and using some acetate, some clear acetate, I'm just positioning that banner on my Misty. Then I'm going to lay the acetate down on top of that, and this will allow me to position the acrylic stamp I'm just pressing it down onto that acetate, kind of going, following the form of that wavy banner there. Just sticking it in place. Once it's positioned, I close the lid and pick up the stamp. It also picks up the acetate. I'm going to peel the acetate away now. And now I have it perfectly positioned where I want it to be. I'm going back to the freshly cut grass, and I'm going to stamp that on the banner there. So now that that's done, I'm going to attach the, uh, the white panel to the front of the card. I'm using the photo mounting tape, and I'm being quite generous with it here because I just want everything to st stand up nice. I don't want it to collapse. This has a lot of bulk to it. Normally, I'm more frugal with my photo mounting tape, but in this case, I want to make sure I had plenty. And I'm getting that positioned, and I'm setting that in place. Now... I'm taking three of the little apples that we die cut and colored out, colored before, and I'm going to place uh, glue on two of them and photo mounting tape on one of them. And I'm just going to position these at the very bottom of that panel.
Two of them will get glued flat, and this third one I'm going to pop it up a little bit. And that looks really cute. So now I wanted to add a little bow here. So I'm taking the lawn trimmings in the lime. I'm just going to cut a little piece of this, maybe about six or seven, seven inches. I'm making two little loops and I'm crossing them over one another and then pulling it through. And that'll make a little tiny bow. I'm just adjusting it to the size that I want. You can play with this forever, but just kind of go with it and cut off the excess. So now I'm taking the multi matte medium from Ranger and I'm just gonna apply a little bit to the back of this bow here. And I'm gonna position that in place and just hold it down for a few seconds. And that will dry crystal clear. So now what I wanna do is put the uh, little banner inside the card. And I thought I would attach the squirrel to the banner, almost like he's kind of holding the banner. And I'm putting a little bit of glue at the end there and I'm just gonna position him in place. I'm leaving a little bit of room there because I want to add some little dots. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Again, making sure I have plenty of glue here so that things don't get moved around and they don't pop up. And I'm just going to position that down. Now I wanted a couple of apples down at the bottom part of the card here. So it kind of looked like some landed on the ground near this little basket of apples. So I'm going to and add, I had forgotten to add some of the highlights to my apples, so that's what you see me doing there. I'm just taking that white gel pen and adding a few highlights. I didn't do them all originally, apparently, so I went back and did those. So now I'm just adding some glue to those and positioning them in place. So now you can see how cute that is, the little pop-up. That was that extra piece that I had cut. I was originally thinking of placing it inside the card at the bottom, but I changed my mind on that, so we'll save that for later. So now I'm going to take my Tombow pen in the lime green, number 195. I'm just adding three little dots. So I had so much fun making this card. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at my website, pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thanks so much for visiting. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.